Hey guys, welcome back to Brian's Mysteries and Adventures on Trail. Um, today we are going to be discussing the very, very sad case of Ashley Lori Heavy Runner. And Ashley disappeared from Montana's Blackfeet Nation in June 2017, and she was 20 years old at the time. And this case is just really, just so incredibly sad. Um, Kimberly Laurie, her sister, has really put in just one of the most incredible efforts to try and help find her sister. And really, my thoughts and prayers go out to her just to start this video because in researching this, I've, I've never found somebody so dedicated to finding clues to what happened to her sister. Not only that, but this case has brought to my attention just, just some incredible numbers and just so sad that how many indigenous women go missing and how you know just a very little number of them are even logged into the national missing persons database and this is according to actual studies that they have done um, apparently there's just so many bureaucratic cracks and um, that native and native women and girls are falling through and it's just really, really sad. So I really hope that this video can bring some more attention to this because, it, as I said in researching this, it, it really is quite shocking. So Ashley grew up on the remote Blackfeet Nation in northwest Montana. Um, lords of the High Plains, the Blackfeet endured a brutal relationship with the U.S. government, um, you know, way back since the 1800s. And um, the tribe was then... Um, suffered serious mat land loss, disease, and forced, you know, all kinds of starvation, and they were eventually moved onto this reservation, which is now a, a very beautiful spot as far as land goes. This is a very proud, resilient community, and it really resembles most small towns in, in the West. But from 1979 kidnapping of Murderca, murder of Monica, uh, still smoking, to the 2016 murder of Matthew Grant, uh, poverty, influx of drugs, and Justin's system that is really, really sort of non-existent. Um, for millions of acres, they have 17 police officers. So as you can imagine, things often go unreported. And really, as we get into the video, I'll discuss more. But um, uh, growing up, Ashley Loring and her sisters, they were originally in foster care before moving to live with their grandparents and other siblings. Very good kids, well-rounded. Um, they went. They learned to ride, chop wood, um, muck stalls, swam in the nearby creeks and lakes, and just all around good kids. Um, Ashley is known for having just a beautiful, beautiful smile, and as you can see in the picture, she really is a beautiful girl. And she, she was a star athlete in high school. She excelled in the Blackfeet Community College, where she studied the environment. Uh, she was once even asked to give a presentation at the College of Bozeman about buffalo. And her speech earned her wide recognition on the uh, the reservation. Um, Ashley's disappearance really shattered the family. Uh, I can't even imagine what they've gone through. And honestly, they have put more effort and not only effort into finding her, but also changing legislation and getting people to, to pay attention to this. I'm going to go over some of the numbers, but they really are stacked. From what I understand, law enforcement did not handle Ashley's case the way they should have. Um, they, they should have taken it serious right from the get-go, and apparently that's not what happened. They just kind of blew it off and said, well, you know, she's a young kid. She just wants to run off and do whatever she wants, even though the family was saying that's not what happened. You know, she would never do that. Like I said, there's only 17 tribal police officers tasked with patrolling 1.5 million acres of this reservation. That's an area larger than the, the entire state of Delaware. I mean, they should have at least 100, if not more. What's worse is that they are besieged with one of the highest call loads that apparently rivals some of the even biggest cities. You know, and obviously they can't handle it. They can't handle the crime rate with 17 officers. So it really is in a very crazy situation. Most of their resources are funded through the um, Bureau of Indian Affairs, which is, I guess, already known for being chronically underfunded. And the Blackfeet tribe has consistently asked for more resources to protect its citizens, and they have consistently not been met. 
On these reservations, you have three different governments who are responsible for protecting public health and public citizens in Indian country, the federal government, state governments, and tribal governments. And any time you get three governments to try and do something, it, it's obviously very challenging. And due to some Supreme Court ruling and acts of Congress, most tribes can only charge their own members with a crime, which means they can't arrest anybody else who commits a crime on their own land. That really is kind of scary. So if somebody from not on the reservation just comes on and commits a horrific crime, the police officer can't do anything. He has to wait there until some other agency gets there. Now, can, mind you, this is millions of acres. So again, very scary. So according to the Sovereign Bodies Institute, Ashley's case represents just one of many indigenous women and girls in Montana that are missing, murdered, or the status is unknown. Even more disturbing, Native American women just compromise 3% of Montana's to total population, yet they account for 30% of all cases involving missing women. I mean, that is just beyond staggering. Kimberly Loring um, has put in three years of agonizing work trying to find out what happened to her sister Ashley. And, you know, she says the nightmare just never stops. And I, I can't even imagine. For more than two years, the whole family has scoured the intense reservation largely on their own, hoping to retrace the loved one's last step. Um, and apparently, um, Kimberly did find a piece of evidence. Just weeks after Ashley went missing, Kimberly, Lori, and a family friend discovered a pair of red stained boots and a tattered sweater that the family believes did belong to Ashley Loring on the northern edge of the reservation. More than two years since turning those items into law enforcement for DNA testing, the family says they still have not received any results, which to me is just crazy. From what I understand, if Kimberly and her family weren't actually putting in all this effort, nobody would be. I mean, it sounds like the police just gave it a little bit of an effort, but due to all these regulations on reservations, they don't have the resources and apparently it was botched from the beginning. And this is so sad because apparently on Native American communities across the country, there's a common saying that when an indigenous woman goes missing, she goes missing twice. First her body vanishes and then her story. And really, that, that is just so incredibly sad. In the first two weeks after Ashley went missing, the family thought she had been visiting a family friend and had lost her phone, which has happened before, they said. When they finally realized something was wrong, in late June of 2017, the family said they filed a missing persons report with the Tribal Police and the Bureau of Indian Affairs. Those authorities joined the family on several early searches, but according to the Senate of Indian Affairs committees, it would be two months before the BIA, which is responsible for the actual investigation of major crimes on the reservation, seriously investigated the case. When Kimberly found the red paint stained pair of boots and the tattered sweater, they thought that it was the last thing that Ashley was wearing. They, like I said, turned it over to the police and it was just put away for months. Kimberly Loring found the sweater and the boots not far from a remote lake house owned by a gentleman named Mr. McDonald, I'll refrain from using his first name for privacy issues, who says that he was one of the last people to actually be seen with Ashley. After the loss of her beloved grandfather and a devastating breakup with her first love, Kimberly Loring said that her sister had begun using drugs and hanging out with an older crowd, including Mr. McDonald, who was in his 50s at the time. After losing both of these support systems, her sister says that she was just a completely different uh, person. Apparently, Nightline went to Sam McDonald's uh, remote lake house cabin to ask him about the six days he spent with Ashley Loring, and he insists that he was being framed, although he does admit that he was partying with Ashley and had been adapt battling addiction for years. Law enforcement also questioned Mr. McDonald multiple times about Ashley's disappearance. He claims police broke the lock on his door and searched his property many times. McDonald also claims that the last time he saw Ashley was on the morning of June 11, 2017, after she asked him to take her to a roadside pull-off so that someone called V-Dog could pick her up. Apparently, McDonald said that he was later told that V-Dog is a nickname for a Mr. Valenzuela, a man in his 50s with a criminal background including burglary, weapons convictions, who split his time between the Seattle area and the Blackfeet reservations. Ashley's family said that Venezuela was seeing her shortly before she disappeared and that at the time he was still in a rocky marriage with 
Tashina Crane, who was also known as T, according to the Glacier County Court. Venezuela filed for divorce from T roughly a month after La Ashley disappeared. Kimberly Loring continued to see Mr. McDonald and ask him about what happened, and Mr. McDonald kept telling him, telling her that she needed to speak to T or Mr. Venezuela, that they were the only ones that knew what happened to Ashley. So it's really just gotten nowhere, and Ashley remains missing. Ashley was just such a bright, wonderful young lady. Uh, she loved to dress up nice. Um, there's this picture of her prom dress. It's this big, beautiful pink dress. She loved wearing makeup. She was very artistic, just a very, very friendly young woman and had a lot of really big aspirations and dreams. Um, she was only about 95 pounds, roughly 5'2", brown hair, brown eyes, and um, we're coming up, she'll, I guess, be 24 this coming November. She was 20 at the time that she disappeared. And like I said, her family has just gone to great lengths to get this story out there and try and find what happened to her. As far as, you know, they've gone to lengths as contacting the Senate and trying to get legislation passed and anything they can to try and find Ashley and to help bring awareness to all the other missing indigenous women and just how much of an issue it is and how underfunded and understaffed these agencies are and how much you know we more people need to be looking at this and you know providing the funds and and benefits and things that these um, people living on these reservations uh, desperately need i'm just overwhelmed at the strength and determination of kimberly loring ashley's sister and her whole family in trying to find out what happened to ashley um, Ashley disappeared on June 13th, 2017, and like I said, she has brown hair, brown eyes, is about 5'2", and roughly 90 to 95 pounds. I'm going to leave in the description the number and names of the law enforcement agencies you can call if you happen to have any information, and I ask that you please be respectful in the comments, and I'm going to leave all the details. Um, of my sources, all the news articles in the description. So if you'd want to do some more research or uh, donate or anything you'd like to do, that's all going to be in the description because these are real matters and real people. And th this case just really got to me. And my thoughts and prayers go out to the Loring family and Kimberly. And you, you're just a, an amazing woman. And I truly hope that you and your family are able to find closure soon. My thoughts and prayers go out to you and to Ashley. If you have any information regarding this case, please call, contact the Browning Police Department at 406-338-4000 or call 911 and tell them you have information regarding Ashley Loring Heavy Runner in Browning, Montana on the Blackfeet Reservation. Thank you all so much for watching. God bless everyone and take care.